For years, we've been using Elementor to build our websites in WordPress. And the most used and most underrated widget we have simply taken for granted has been the sections widget with its rows and columns. But now that most basic foundation has been replaced with a new container widget that has so many settings that it has thrown all we know on how to build websites using Elementor out the window. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use that new containers widget in Elementor. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so in the old way of using Elementor, we always used to use sections and each sections by default had a row and columns. So as you can see here, here's the section and here's the columns to this row. And by default, everything within a column would always stack vertically. If we want to add something horizontally, we'd have to go and add a new column and then we'd be able to add whatever we wanted into this column. Now with containers, that is not the case anymore. So as you can see, here's the section and inside is the container. So in this container, everything would stack vertically, but in this container, everything stacks horizontally. And I can change this on the left hand side menu. As you can see the direction setting that this is pointing horizontally and if I click down then you can see all the containers inside stack vertically. Now if I select horizontal again you can see everything aligned back inside this container. So now there's no need of using columns anymore because now now whatever you have inside the container would stack in the direction that you tell it. And this isn't limited to just a desktop. You can have different settings here for mobile and tablet, which is actually quite useful because sometimes the design just doesn't fit on mobile. So you can actually have a different design setting. Something else that was a bit of a limitation within the old Elemental was that you were actually quite limited as to how many inner sections you could have. So here is one section. And if I wanted to split this up for whatever reason into inner sections within this section, I would take this widget, I'd drop it in, but then I could not do that again. I was only limited to have an inner and outer section. That is not the case with the new containers. If I go and I take a container and I drag it into position here, I can keep adding as many inner containers as I want. As you can see here, I can keep doing this until forever. That's actually quite useful because that opens up a whole bunch of new design options. And with every single container here, you can change the direction and settings of each one individually. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is the container width. So in the old system, when you added a new section, you could see that the default width was boxed and you could change how many pixels you wanted that width to be, which is a great thing to have in certain designs. So like you can actually make something small, say like 500 and you could actually stack it in that section and would only affect all the content that you'd put into that section and it would contain it into that width that you had set for that box. The problem is this is always in pixels. And if you went into mobile, you'd start running into different problems because on mobile, there's so many different types of screen sizes because in mobile and tablet, you always ended up having to go into an advance and you'd have to put left and right padding to make sure that all the text and headings and that that you put inside your container was away from the edges of the screen. So now in a new system, what has changed is now if we take a container, we put it onto a page by default. Again, you can see it's on boxed. The other option is full width, but we'll cover that just now. But the main difference being on boxed is that we now have the option to change from pixels to percentage or RAM or viewports and some other options, which is a great addition and I really do like this a lot because now I have the option to set percentages. So now if I go into mobile, I can say that I want this as percentage and I want this to be an, a 90 and then in tablet, I can set that and I can have this at an 85%. In desktop, I don't have to use percentages here as well. Here, I do have the option that I can still use pixels or whatever other options I choose. I want to keep the settings for mobile and all that separate away from the desktop and here we can actually set whatever pixels that we think that would look good and another perk to using boxes is that the background if i had to change the color to this it'll take it to the whole section and not just the container so no matter how big the default box is within your section the background color won't be affected it'll actually go across the whole screen now let's say i'm going to set this to a 500 width for this design i can go smaller the slider only stops at 500, but you can have the option of saying that this is going to be a 200 if for whatever reason you wanted to do that. But for now, I'm just going to say it's a 500. Now you can see that I added a couple of widgets here and you can see it's all aligned within that 500 pixels that I had set for this particular box. And if I had to expand this, then you can see that everything slides across until it meets to that pixel width. So now let's add a new container to this as a new section. And I'm going to click and drag it across, drop it onto this page. But now this time, I'm going to have this one as full width. Now why would you want to have something as full width? Well, it depends on the situation. So let's just say, for example, you wanted the image on the left 
and some text and the heading on the right. But the image on the left has to be right up against the screen for that particular design. It is a design element that we do come across quite a lot. Now that I've selected this main container as full width, I'm going to go add an image and a container underneath. Now why not two containers? Because the image in and of itself, because the image in and of itself doesn't actually need a container. But the heading and the text that I want to have for that section, I want to have that affected separately because I want that to be moved horizontally. So in order to do that, I'm going to click on an image. I'm going to drag that across. Underneath this, I'm going to add the container underneath. Now scroll up to the top again. I'm going to click on the six dot icon. And you can see that the direction that I want is I want this to be horizontal. So now you can see that the image is on the left and this container is on the right. With the container being on the right, I can now add my heading and I can also add my text. Now, if I wanted the heading and text to be in the middle of the image, I just click on the six dot icon of the main container. I look on the line items and I'd set that to center. And now you can see that the container that's holding the heading and the image has now moved into the center of this image. So you can think of the image here as its own container. So you don't actually have to put one in here. Now let's just say that you wanted this image right up to the edge of the screen. Now obviously by default you won't be able to do that. Something you're going to have to do, which I hope they fix in the future, is you click on the main section again. In advance, you're going to have to put the padding to zero and that'll fix that. And then you must just make sure that the image in its style is set to 100% width to make sure that it'll always fill out the whole side that you've assigned it to. And as you can see, that padding hasn't affected the container on the right hand side because it has its own settings that you can manipulate in any way that you'd like. Another interesting thing that you'll see about a full width container is if I click on this container and I say that I want it to full width, I can still manipulate its width here. So I can still say that I want this as a 50%. And you can see that the whole container moved in. I'm affecting just the container and it doesn't actually stretch that whole setting into the sides. So let me show you that now. That if I put a color to this, you can see that that color only stretched out to the width of that 50%. The reason why you'd want to do this is just to have that sort of design option. So yeah, you can even stylize it more. You can say just to have a drop shadow and maybe make the corners a bit more rounded. So there you can see, you can play around with that sort of design just to make it as a design element and everything you house would be put into this, this section. But now having said that, if I put this to full width, if I do the same thing within it, so what I mean by that is if I take another container, or another widget that actually doesn't matter. Let me change the color to this so you can see what I mean. And I set this container to full width and at 50%. You can see now that it actually went to the start. And now we can actually manipulate the placement of this container inside. So if I go to the main one, so now I can say left aligned, center aligned, or right aligned, and you can see that that container within is now moved in there. All because that one is only set to 50% width. So now it has room to move around within. And again, this opens up a whole bunch of different design options that you can take with you because that doesn't apply just to left and right. That also applies to the top and bottom. So what I mean by that is if I click on this main section, I can say that I want everything as a default in the start, in the center or in the end. So having putting those two together, I can literally put it at the bottom right as well within the section. As long as there's space to maneuver within that container, as you can see here. Now that trick that I just showed you doesn't apply just to containers. So if I go and I take an image and I put it underneath there, you can see that the same thing can apply. So if I go into an advanced and I say the width is custom, that same option is now applied. So now I can set it to say like 50% and it's not just percentages, by the way, you do have the options of pixels and all that other stuff, just like you had before. And this can also be aligned just as if it was a container. And that is a very, very cool feature to use. Let's just say, for example, I'm gonna keep these two items here within this. And I'm gonna say that I want this main container to put everything horizontally. And this image, if I go into advanced, and I go into the custom width. Let's say I want to set this to say a 30% and I'm going to want this to be set on the right hand side. Now to do that, I just go back into the main container and then I'd say justify content and I'd say space between. And now you can see the image is now pushed completely on the right. A very cool trick to do. And on the left here, I can just add again, some headings and some text. So all I did over here was a center aligned the heading and the text and I added a border radius and a shadow. Now you can see there's a design here and I can actually change the background to say like maybe an image or a color or anything you'd want, as well as having this image on the right. And you can see that there's a space here and I don't have to add any extra spacing or extra columns or anything like that. I have a whole bunch of different design options straight out the gate without having to add anything to manipulate the whole scene.
Something just to keep in mind though, like I said over here that I put everything center aligned. If I go into this container and I say that I want everything center aligned vertically and horizontally, it doesn't affect the stuff that's inside widgets. Like what I mean by that is like the text here, I had to say that I wanted to center align because if I didn't, although the widget itself was center aligned, what was in it wasn't. So for text widgets, just keep that in mind and that applies for headings as well just to make sure that they are also center aligned so that you don't run into this any options later on. Because if you go into say something like mobile, you can see here that this heading wasn't actually center aligned at all. I actually had to click on center aligned to make sure that the text within the widget was center aligned. So now that I've showed you all that, now I'm gonna show you wrapping and grow. Now the wrapping and grow features are great for responsive designs. Now here we have the section, here we have this one container, it has a heading and some text within it. We have another container that has three containers inside that, and each one of these white containers have their own widgets. But now you can see that this main container's direction is going to be horizontal while everything else is actually set down to vertical. Now if I went and I added another container, now as you can see that because the main container is still set to horizontal, the system keeps stacking everything no matter how many times you're actually duplicating it. And obviously this is not going to work. So in order to fix this and not sit and make a whole bunch of extra containers needlessly, we have the ability to wrap. So we're gonna head over to this main container here that has all these inner containers and we're gonna say wrap. Now you see that these inner containers actually defaulted to the normal size of 100% width. Now if I click on this container, I make sure that it is on full width and not unboxed. And I'm gonna say that this is going to be say like a 42. And if I copy the setting of this container and I paste the style of it, you can see that the main container's wrapping function actually starting to work now. So what's happening now is it keeps trying to stack containers until it hits the 100% mark. And in this case, cause 42 plus 42 is 84, there's no space to put in this one because this one also needs to be a 42%. So it wraps it around to the next line. And I'll keep doing so until there's nothing else to wrap. But now at 42, you can see that this has got space here. Now you could say 49 and that's if you want to, and that would be correct over here. But another option, which is actually pretty good, is that grow feature. And the reason why I'm gonna be using that here is because there's other places that you're gonna be needing to use that as well. And it really does save time using grow. So I'm gonna click on this container again. I'm gonna go over to advanced. In the sizing option, we have this grow and shrink. If you click on grow, you'll see that it'll push as much as it can on this line without making anything else push down into the next row. So if I copy this now, and I paste it to all the inner columns, you can see that it aligns perfectly in the middle. Even though that the percentage was set to 42%, it does look like it's at the 50. And that's the cool thing about using the grow function. So now if I change all these columns to say a 20%, and I copy that setting across to all the containers, you can see that the main container was putting as many 20% as it could, making sure that if there was any extra space with the grow feature, it would even them all out to make sure that they're all symmetrical. And because there wasn't enough space to put any more, the next two only went to the next line. And because there was only two more, here you can see that because it's trying to keep symmetrical with the grow feature, these two just filled out the space of these four, even though that they are still holding the 20% width. So let's say now that we have these six, let's just say you had seven of them. So I'm just gonna duplicate this one as well. So with these seven containers, let's just say that in your design, you didn't want them to be symmetrical and you wanted them to be in the same alignment as these top four. So in order to do that, we'd add a new container behind this one over here. And obviously you just make sure that its settings are the same as all the others. So in order to do that, you'd click on the one before, you'd say copy. And on this one, you just have to say paste style. And then it'll keep the 20% and grow functions there as well. So then like that, so let's just close this design. It'll keep the bottom three in line with the top four. And if you don't want that and you want to revert, then you can just delete it. And then the bottom three will be symmetrical to the width of the, of the container they're being housed in. Another great way of using that grow function is let's just use these four containers here. And I'm gonna add a button to all of them, so just excuse the button. Okay, so now that all these four have a button, let's just say that the text in here has different amounts of space, which makes the stuff within all these containers not as symmetrical as you'd like, which is something that pops up a lot. And this is something where grow actually shines. Let's just change quickly the length of all these different texts. And this is the example that we can use to show how grow can work over here. So on this text widget, because each widget within Elementor now is in essence its own container, if we click on advanced, 
click on grow and we copy that grow setting across all the different text you can see how it'll push the widget spacing as much as it can without altering the entire design in and of itself now because this boundary has been set by the biggest container here which is this one with the most text that grow feature will push this widget spacing out to match the same one as the columns before in the same row and in doing so it pushes down the button to the bottom to line all the buttons perfectly and that is the wrapping and grow features okay so we have covered a lot in this video one of the final things that I have to touch on that's going to help you a lot is to change the inner ordering of columns and widgets. So what do I mean by that? So in this design, you can see that on the left here is an image and on the right, there's a heading and text. And if I go down a little bit more, the heading and text is on the left hand side and the image is on the right. And you can see the final part is the image is left again and then the heading and the text is on the right again. Okay, so now if I head over into the mobile view, you can see that what happens in responsive mode is what normally happens is the image and then the next one is the heading and the text but then because the second line was heading text then image it doesn't look good on mobile it's fine on the desktop design if we go back there because that's how it looked like that in the design it was fine but when we collapse everything you can see that the image is down at the bottom and we don't actually want that we want this image above the heading and text just like what happened over here with the image heading and text now we want to apply that throughout the rest of them. So a great feature I can show you here is order numbering. So you can assign everything in a container to a particular order. So in this desktop view, I don't mind leaving the ordering just as it is because it just works on desktop. So if I click onto mobile or tablet, I don't want that to be the case. I just click on the child container and not the main container. I head over to advanced and here you can see ordering. So here I want to put this as custom. I'm going to say this one is zero because you always start with zero and not one. And then in all the other containers, I'd obviously do the same thing. So in this container here with the heading and the text, I'd go into advanced. I go into custom order and this one I'm going to say it's number one. The next one I'd say three, four, five and so forth. And there we go. Now all six containers are aligned in specific order. So I started with zero. If you don't want to start with zero, then you can start with one. I just like to start with zero. And now in mobile view, the custom ordering will always reflect what we have chosen here in custom. So if I go back into desktop, everything goes back to its normal alignment within this main container. And then in mobile, again, now you can see that everything is in the proper order. Okay, I hope you liked this video. It actually took quite a while to make this. This way, I'm not gonna lie and I hope it covers everything you need about the containers it is something new and something to get used to but it's not so bad for me I found the biggest hurdle has to be that it has slowed down my production speed but other than that there is a lot of options that you have at your disposal that you can really make some interesting designs at some points in the future Elementor is going to stop supporting the sections with the rows and columns so you might as well just get used to it now and then slowly convert your website over at your own pace instead of a big scramble rush and panic when all of a sudden your website isn't working don't forget to like and subscribe because that stuff really does help this channel grow and i'll see you in the next one cheers